let go of your chairs. We all made it. Everybody's safe and sound. Everybody's here. Thank you so much for being here at today's very special screening of Free Solo. What did you think of the movie? <laughs> Just, just to give you an idea of the impact that this movie is making, not only did it win the Audience Award at the Toronto International Film Festival and the Napa Valley Film Festival, but hot off the presses, just yesterday, last night in New York, the Critics' Choice Documentary Awards, Free Solo was awarded not one, not two, but three awards for Best Sports Documentary, for uh, Best Innovative Documentary, Boy Did It Earn That, <laughs> and for Best Cinematography, all three very well earned. Please welcome the composer of the music for the solo, Marco Vitrami. <laughs> and he, he sang a song for the film, Kick Across here. <laughs> the Daredevil feed as the guy who climbed that thing. Please welcome producers and directors, Jimmy Chin and Chai Vassarelli. Okay, I mean, beat your heart out, Spider-Man. I mean, this guy is a real superhero. Alex Honnold. Congratulations for, for sitting in the seat. <laughs> um, but I want to ask, uh, I, I want to ask, uh, where, where did this start? Like your your first meeting, the idea that you first got to make this film, and to approach Alex, your reaction when you were first approached. You know, let, let's start from there. Like where did it start for you guys? There's a story about Alex as a kid. Um, where he began climbing without ropes because it was scarier to speak to another person, to ask them to be his partner. Um, so he'd go out by himself and hence without a partner to belay him and support him. So I think that anecdote always just moved for me and myself, like very deeply that fear was something we understood, maybe not quite that extreme. Um, and then methodically, this kid who was intimidated by vegetables, like scared of, uh, <laughs> scared of intimacy, of hugging, had this vision that he wanted to connect. And so he began to teach himself how to eat vegetables, how to hug, how to move through his fears systematically. And that was just something that was always so inspiring to us. So it was always about Alex's character. Um, but you guys know each other for a long time. Yeah, and I've known Alex for, I think, over 10 years now. And, uh, and I've also been filming and shooting in the kind of vertical world, the mountain world. I've worked with a lot of the top athletes in their kind of respective sports, whether it's climbing or mountain climbing or ski mountaineering. And I've just never seen anybody perform at this level um, when the stakes were this high. And uh, I was truly blown away. And I, I know a lot of the top athletes. And you know, I, I think of him, you know, he's an anomaly among a peer group of anomalies. Like they're all anomalies, but I think people all recognize that Alex does something different. And so that, that aspect of his you know, climbing uh, was also very interesting to, them, to us. But we were interested in the character study, and then we brought, like, we were talking to Alex, and he brought El Cap, and that changed the deal. Like, it just changed the game. You're like, there's no reason to make a film unless I'm free solo and El Cap. <laughs> 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 
Well, also, I want to ask you about, you know, when you first met uh, and you were talking about not just, okay, we're going to film you climbing El Cap, do a free solo, but the other larger themes that you wanted to explore in this movie about passion, about fearlessness, about your your relationship with, with Simon. Well, I mean, to be to be honest, we actually never talked about any of those things. To me, I, was, I thought of it as we're making a movie about free solving on cap. Oh. And, then, and then I was like, man, why are there so many other cameras around while I'm living my life and hanging out with my girlfriend and cooking? You know, like, why are we talking about it so much? We're making a movie about El Cap. And then when I saw the final film, I was like, oh. <laughs> 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 The thing is, I mean, I really trusted Chai and Junie to do what they needed to do to make a great film. And so, I, in some ways, I was trying not to ask too many questions. I was like, they do their thing, I do my thing, and, and we'll just see how it all plays out. Well, uh, Tim and Marco, when they asked, what was the first time you even just heard about Marco? Um, I mean, uh, when, it was a little over a year ago, I guess. Uh, uh, I saw a rough cut of it, and I was just like blown away. Um, the, uh, yeah, I mean, it was, it was amazing. I, there was, um, I had a few ideas immediately about, you know, things I wanted to do uh, with the score, um, which I'm quite glad to be curious to. <laughs> <laughs> so how about you? Like, like when you uh, started to see footage, and I'm assuming you saw the footage of Alex climbing, and that, like, maybe, like, stirred the inspiration for you for that? Well, you know, I I got a call from Brian Lowe, who's a great friend of mine. I'm sure some of you guys in the room know Brian. He, he's, he's just an incredible guy. And, and not only that, works for CA and, and my agent, but he's also been one of my best friends for over 25 years. But I've been on tour and been touring with my wife, and been, we've been two years of Soul to Soul, and, and we were in the middle of the summer. And I was in actually in the middle of recording an album at the same time, my first solo project in a couple of years. So I was flying in from tour and, and going to the studio and spending three days in the studio sleeping on the couch, 18 hour days in the studio making a record. And Brian says, look, I just saw this incredible film over the weekend. And they're curious if you, if you can, if would consider writing a song for the score. And, I, and he told me about it. I'm like, you know, God, Brian, you know, first off, I, I don't know that I have the brain power right now to do that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know that I have the talent to do that. And, and I, what the hell do I know about mountain climbing? I mean, I sang it once in a song a long time ago about skydiving and mountain climbing. I've never done either one of those things. I mean, and I'm a pilot. I fly the plane, and I don't want to be anywhere outside with it not having an engine. So um, I told him, send it to me, I'll watch it, and you know, if I feel inspired, then maybe I'll, I'll have an idea or two. And he sent the film to me, and, and I watched it immediately with my, my daughters, two of my daughters and my wife and had a notepad with me and I, I fell in love with Alex immediately. I fell in love with the big thing of the movie, what I felt what it meant and what it could mean to a lot of people, what it could mean to people who are, are trying to climb all sorts of mountains in their lives and trying to get over all sorts of obstacles in their lives, uh, trying to swim all kinds of rivers in their lives. It, it made me think of all sorts of things and all sorts of challenges that people have and, and how they overcome them. And uh, I made all these notes and, and I, Talked to a friend of mine, Lori McKenna, who, who wrote the song with me and sent it to her. And, and we, she watched it and she wrote the same notes that I wrote. And we compared our notes after not talking to each other. I was like, gosh, you're, you got the same phrases, the same ideas that I had. And, and we, we both fell in love with the film. And, and, and I think it's not only is it a fantastic documentary, it's one of the best films I've ever seen. Yeah. And uh, it's, it, it, I, I love what it says, I love the inspiration that it has. And, I mean, you can't help but love this guy when you watch him. You can't help but look at this guy and think he's one of the coolest people you ever met. You know, I, I want to ask uh, to, first of all, I've seen the movie three times, and, and every time at the very end of the film, everybody applauds. It's such a great, it's such a rousing, uplifting moment. And uh, you can literally just hear everyone like, that's hell. <laughs> it's a great moment. But, but it's, it's interesting that you, you didn't sort of know overtly that they were going to go for these other other themes. What was that uh, challenging? Something that uh, the, the other themes you wanted to explore, something that evolved throughout the course of making the film? Well, we thought Alex's story was just so rich. And we also felt 
that is a story that may be about a mountain, but it could speak to many people on many different levels who all have other mountains in their lives. Like it's really actually a poem about courage. And, and so yeah, so we knew we would go there. Um, we didn't know we would go quite the way we went, because that's the whole beauty of nonfiction filmmaking. When we started the film, Alex was online dating. Um, on his book tour, and he would arrange dates in most of his stops. And, uh, <laughs> and I was like, this is amazing, but a really scary film with amazing comic relief. <laughs> this is amazing. Um, and then he met Sonia, and who is just this remarkable woman, who is emotionally intelligent, is self-confident enough to be able to push back on him and tell him, tell him what makes her uncomfortable, but still try to love him for who he is. And that was a revelation. So we were making this film, and Sonny comes in, and they start falling in love, and then the film you know, goes in a different direction. So the question is, what did Sonny think of the movie? I mean, you know, I mean, it's a great film. So obviously, <laughs> we, both, we both think it's a great film. I think that for her, especially watching it the first time, it's just harder to, I mean, it's just so much of our life on the screen. You know, for all the ups and the downs, and I mean, you know, it's 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 powerful. I mean, it was you know obviously it's a very difficult situation to go through two years of uh, you know from her perspective watching her boyfriend do this crazy thing and wanting to be supportive but not really knowing the best way and trying to give the right space but also at the same time what the heck. Um, I don't know. I mean, you know, there are a lot of difficult moments for both of us throughout the film, and so um, I think when she saw the first time, you know, I mean, yeah, it's a great film, but it's also you know brings back a lot of a lot of powerful memories. Um, now we've both seen it several times, so it's obviously, you know, we've had some time to process. And, you know, we know how it's going to turn out. I mean, even so, though, when, when I watch the film, you know, the first half of the film, watching my relationship with Sonia on the big screen, it makes me cringe. I'm covering my eyes. It's like the opposite experience that most, most audiences have. You know, because when I watch the climbing, I'm like, this is so awesome. This is so, awesome. This is so beautiful. This is like, this is great. But when I watch, you know, talking to my family and talking to Sonny and, and some of the scenes where I'm like, oh, maybe I should have tried to be a little more kind or like some better, <laughs> little, little, little more tact or something. You know, I mean, there are a lot of things that I watch in the film and I'm like, oh, that's, that's hard to watch. <laughs> but, but that's, but that's the other thing. So obviously you just lay out two years of your life on the screen. It's like, you know, you got some good and some bad. <laughs> yeah, the, other, the other thing is how it's not just about the climb, it's not just about the, the relationship, it's about the, the filmmaking process is part of the process. Uh, and and I, it, it, that hit me the second time I saw the film, because the first time you're focused on the climber, and the second time we're focused on everyone around the climb, you know, especially you, because you were kind of out there with them. So yeah. how did you, I mean, I, it's kind of a loaded question, so in, the, in sort of the simplest way possible, how the heck did you do that? You, you know, be up there and get those key moment shots. Yeah. The ethics of filming it, you know, is kind of a central question in the film, and certainly central question throughout production. Uh, the only way we could have really dealt with it is a number of ways. You know, I'm a professional climber. Everybody on the high angle team is a professional climber, meaning that they, you know, elite professional climbers. And just to visualize that they are dangling next to him. Like they are there, running up and down the. Um, yeah, so uh, for two reasons I need that, because you know, I can't question my crew's ability to make good decisions up there or if they were physically capable, but, I mean, they need to be moving very, very quickly. Alice is also the fastest climber in the world in that kind of frame as well, so, and we're all loading thousands of feet a row, camera packs, full of, you know, full similar cameras and lenses and uh, batteries, all that stuff. Uh, but the other thing about being a professional is that we all understand what it feels like to have, to be on uh, the other side of the camera, be in front of the camera, what that feels like, and if you have a crew that isn't super efficient and dialed, and you know how that makes you feel. So we're very sensitive to all those things. Uh, but before we even started production, we had to answer some questions, and those were, you know, really, if we trusted that Alex was gonna make the right decision, whether you would feel external pressure to do something you wouldn't normally do because you had a production going. Those are the things that we really had to worry about. Uh, but you know, knowing Alex for 10 years and seeing the kind of decisions he made, I really do trust 
Alex, and I don't think this direction is possible that Alex and I didn't have kind of a 10-year kind of working relationship, and this one obviously cranked up quite a bit. Now, Mark, I want to ask you about using, like, like in any sort of dramatic film, action film, uh, this qualifies sort of as uh, both in addition to being a documentary. Um, when to score, when to not? Yeah, um, well, first of all, I, I'd say I, that's one of the things that really <laughs> appealed to me. Um, uh, it was a sort of, you, as a viewer, you're sort of brought into like this process of, and you're watching the filmmaker like discover this existential problem um, and I, it makes you feel really close, I think, as a viewer. I, and um, I, it's that's never happened to me in a, in a movie before, so that's one of the things I thought was amazing about it. Um, um, and not really knowing much about climbing um, at all. I mean, I think I learned most by listening to Alex uh, on Joe Rogan. But um, <laughs> the, um, uh, yeah, so, um, so yeah, that's, that's always uh, a question, you know, where do you score, where don't you? And um, we would talk about it. Um, uh, they had an amazing editor as well on the project, and um, I came out to New York, and we went to the movie together and talked about, you know, um, what music should be doing here, and, you know, where it should be playing, and you know, we I think we spent a day together talking about these things. And uh, music is abstract, um, so you need sort of a common ground, some sort of language. I, uh, for me, it was a question of figuring out. There was like two two thematic things. There's you know the mountain itself that needed some sort of musical statement, something simple and um, uh, you know humbling. Uh, and then also, I think the emotional journey of Alex. And um, as Tim was saying, you know, there's the the um, the whole thing is like a metaphor for life. And and there's the climbing. You know, there's the sort of the dark element of, you know, I could die. It's, it's really dangerous, but at the same time, it's like a, almost a yin-yang thing, because that's also what supplies um, Alex's life and um, gives him freedom and expression and, and all that. And uh, coming to terms with that, I think it was a similar path with the emotional journey that you see from, uh, you know, like the relationship with I'm talking about the character in the movie, by the way. <laughs> if there's a person, I, this is so strange. But this is what I was running through musically, you know. Um, and um, and so having like two chords that alternate, one being like a dark minor chord that's sort of low, and then one uh, like a lighter major chord and that, at the heart. That's really the the, the the crux of it. That's you know, and and developing from that um, as as you know his emotional journey takes off. That, that's sort of thematically what the music was to do. Yeah, Tim, I want to ask too about, you say you were in recording an album and this funeral, you were uh, to your Was it a totally different headspace, yeah. Yeah, yeah a totally different headspace. So so to sort of like make the transition to to go from like working on music that you're, you're just sort of inspired by and just working on in a different headspace to sort of, you know, making one for a feature for a project for something that is like wildly incredibly unique and unlike anything that was ever seen or experienced like like how do you shift right well you know certainly having having an outline in, in the form of a film that gives you a structure to work within something that that gives you a context to start with um but like like we were saying instantly it hit me is a metaphor for life in a lot of ways. And, and, and Alex said something really interesting to me, and, and I think he verbalized it way better than, than, than I could have in my thought process, but I think it really applies the way we were thinking about how this, the narrative of the, of the song that we wrote compares to the narrative of what we got out of the film while, while watching it. 
was we were talking about climbing. I was like, I didn't think about climbing. So I'm afraid of heights. And he said, Are you afraid of heights or are you afraid of dying? Mm -hmm. And I thought, Wow, that to me that really hit home to what we were writing about when we when we wrote this song. It's about living life and experiencing life and overcoming challenges. Um, and that's how I got into that headspace. Is, is thinking about it in that term, in those terms, in that narrative. I wanted to write a song, or we wanted to write a song, Maury and I wanted to write a song that certainly applied and supported and 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 did justice to what the film was saying and what the film meant and what and the beauty of the film. So, so lyrically, we wanted to write something that did all those things. Sonically, we wanted to write something that was very cinematic and and did justice to the vistas that you got shot and the, and the cinematography and the scope that you got shot. We, we really wanted to capture something that would do that, do all those things. Not be right on the nose, but be on the face at least of what it was. But we also wanted something that would stand on its own. So when we got in the middle of recording this song and writing this song, and I think we even said it on, on, on a phone call that we had, you know, we'll write two or three things and give, give you an option of what we were going to write. And we did. We started writing two or three things, but when we got down the road with this one, it just really struck a chord in what it really meant, what the movie really meant, and what we really felt about watching it. And we, we wanted to write something that would stand on its own and be inspirational in its own, in its own world and its, in its own life. But also when you saw the film, it really made you have an aha moment as to the connection of what the film was really saying. Not necessarily, like Alex said, that he was part of our comment now, but what the film was really saying as a viewer, when you were watching it, once you really felt how you were inspired by it. We wanted to write a song that really kind of married those two narratives together and sort of give you an aha moment when you, when you saw it, or heard them both together, I guess, or saw it and heard it. Do I have to ask, uh, Alex, the, when you have that false start the first time, you did it, and you, you, first of all, how did you get past that? <laughs> yeah, I actually found another bathroom episode, and then, uh, and then there's some herbs. I mean, it's complicated, basically, but, but I recall that down some herbs that are always on the, on the wall. Okay, so, <coughs> so the morning that you actually went and did it, the thing that struck me was you went from, from going, from sort of being nervous about it in some way, uh, uh, because you were distracted, because everyone was watching and filming and everything, to having this like confidence like you were ahead of schedule. And and the other thing, like you get to that Bob of Boulder, that, 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 yeah, that's the right yeah. of, okay, and and you you look at the camera and you you're like you're like aha, like it was such a great moment. Like I got this. Like what what, what, what was is the shift in, in your Yeah, I mean the main difference is just six more months of preparation. Oh. I mean so <laughs> you know, you're talking about it was the first attempt, it's like all oh, the pressure and the people and the whatever. I mean that all sounds you know, I mean, those were all maybe compounding the problem, but I mean, basically the issue is that I was, was not prepared. Um, I just, there just wasn't enough time. The, the fall season was closing, it was disturbing and snowing. I, I knew the top half of the route really well, but I didn't know the bottom half that well. And so, you know, I knew that the season was about to shut down, the weather was done, and so I was like, oh, I might as well give it a try. And then ultimately, I just wasn't, wasn't quite ready. But, um, but I think what I really gained from the build attempt was that now I knew that it was possible. You know, I was like, oh, I was so close that I'd just been a little more prepared and I felt a little more confident and my ankle been a little more healed and I felt comfortable with <laughs> one foothold that I didn't trust. And, um, you know, I was like, oh, it's basically there. And so then I went home to Vegas and basically trained all winter. I was super, super motivated. And when I came back in the spring, I was like, I know it's possible. I know that I'm extra fit, I'm healthy, I'm ready. And then, so by the time I actually did it, I was like, I am 100% ready for this. Wow, wow, but you can tell. <laughs> if, if, you think, if you think about what Alex had just said, and you think about, the accomplishment that he had and in the the narrative of this film and, and Alex's struggles, you know, throughout all of it. And you think about the confidence that you have to have in yourself to attempt something like this and the the will to do it and know that you're capable of doing this thing and I trusted myself that much. If you can get that much out of a film that Find something in yourself that you can trust and believe in it and buy into it wholly and do that. I mean, that's such an inspirational theme. It's such an inspirational it's very, story. Very yeah. inspirational. Yeah, I also want to ask, so watching the film and, and, and seeing all the, the, the news about the people who, who didn't make it, and the people who died and everything, and, and they weren't being filmed, and you were being filmed. Like, did you, 
the three of you especially ever sort of this throughout this process be like are, are we sure because if this doesn't if god forbid something happens like we film this and there's like that like there's more of a responsibility and you know did you ever really talk about that well we had to we didn't necessarily talk about it full on the objective was always the opposite was to kind of insulate him from what we were feeling but it had to be responsibly a constant conversation between Jim and myself and the rest of production about are we here for the right reasons are we doing the right thing um, but I, I just it's just this is the first time all of us have ever been together um, which is amazing and I just want to say there's like this weird there's a thing that like Alex Jimmy and I always trusted Alex and Alex is that he would do, he would show up and he would do his best and he would prepare. And if it didn't feel right, we would turn it off. And then there's this other part that like Jimmy and our high angle team are really like the best in the world at what they do. And that can't be, I think it's really hard for people to understand that. That these guys are elite rope climbers who are up there on ropes and they know they're not gonna drop their camera. They know they're not gonna let the rope slip because they, they can't. And they know they're also going to get the shot, most importantly. <laughs> <laughs> joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> but that's my job, like, that's what I'm supposed to say. Um, but then, like, just the amount of craft that was brought then, you know, by Tim and Marco, is just, it, it's just such a special thing for us as filmmakers, where we knew that Marco would help articulate our vision of what we wanted. We knew that he would... Bring, help us, help, help the emotions come out, help us guide the audience. And that was, like, it's just such a special thing to work with someone at that level of his craft. And so thank you. He also, like, rides motorcycles, so I did know in advance he probably would kind of get us. <laughs> right? I mean, I was immediately. <laughs> um, and then the same with Tim, where we were like, we ha you have to solve our emotional situation. You've got to tell people what to feel when the movie ends. There you go. <laughs> so, I mean, it's just the craft that was brought on all levels. I think, I personally think that Alex's craft made us all step up. And that was Absolutely. a real privilege. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's so, so pretty up with you, Jimmy. Yeah, thanks, guys. And, uh, <laughs> for Jimmy Amprox, that you, you have, um, you know, just to put it bluntly, while you're making that final climb, for both of you, did you ever, did you ever have like a, an oh shit moment? You know where you were just like you, you really felt like the danger of what you were doing like a one moment you mean before the climb or no, during, during. I mean, for, for me not really um i mean obviously <laughs> well, okay, um, you know uh, walking up the base obviously is a little bit intimidating it's you know a little nervous like butterflies i mean anytime you do something that's never been done that you've never done i mean it feels sort of exciting and, and looking up at a 3,000 foot wall, you're still like, wow, that's a really big wall. Um, but, uh, but no, I was, I was very prepared. I felt very comfortable. And, uh, and then throughout the whole climb, I basically felt better and better as I got higher. Um, I mean, as you can see, when I finished the boulder problem, I sort of smiled to the camera and, and I waved to my friends in the meadow. And, um, and basically, as I got higher, I just felt more and more confident because um, it was just going better than expected. I was climbing faster, I felt stronger, and, and it's, uh, yeah, it's all very positive. How about for you? Well, we had. It's hard to uh, kind of overstate like how great the team was. You know, there were a couple things. I had to have utmost trust in Alex and I did. And I had to have utmost trust in the crew, which I also did. And you know, he'd been practicing for two years and we'd been filming him practicing, but we were also practicing as well. I mean, they were basically doing the same things because every time I'd rappel down the wall, somebody's rappelling down the wall with me. So basically, it means that the two of us are spending the day going up and down on the wall and managing. Yeah. So it meant that by the end of the shoot, the, I, we were all very fit. And very, <laughs> uh, yeah, as we say, we, everybody was yoked. <laughs> um, but it was just, you know, in a way, you know, Alex really had to execute perfectly and the team had to execute perfectly. And the directive the night before, you know, part of it's um, in the film when I say tomorrow, no mistakes. And, uh, but the other directive was just, you know, stay focused on your job, 
do not get distracted. And I needed to say that to myself as much as the crew, uh, because you know, where are we calling in? And you know, you're, you, if you let your mind wander, you already have so much to think about. I mean, you're, you're carrying you know, thousands of your rope, at least several hundred, and so you can't have a rope in your frame when you're filming something. So you have to have them coiled up and the, and the, the rope ends tied off and in a way that it doesn't slip out and you start to unravel and knock, you know, knock out. I mean, every single detail had to be dialed and you know, changing lenses and putting batteries on and doing the focusing. And, you know, it was, it was like, don't get distracted. And don't forget to press record. <laughs> <laughs> Good advice. Because it happens. It actually happens. And you have that much going on, and you're 2,000 feet in the air, and you're kind of spinning around slowly like a spider, and you've got all this stuff going on, and you're trying to get your camera to focus, and it's just a, there's a lot to think about. So you can't really sit there and worry about what is going to happen or not. So you really have to stay focused on what you're doing. We just out of my curiosity, how many of you guys are climbers? Or are there as many climbers here? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I just got saw a bunch of shit looking stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I was my curiosity. <laughs> uh, how, how many of you guys have been to Yosemite and seen, seen all the guys? Seen all the yeah, okay. Oh, That's wow. Wow. Yeah. represent for California. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I, I just maybe want to add on to what Jimmy's saying. Uh, for those that that don't climb or don't really know about. I mean, so hiking to the summit of El Cap, just to get to the top of the wall before you can rappel in, means that you're hiking up 3,000 feet with, you know, maybe a 50 pound backpack, depending on how much rope you're carrying, how much water, how much food, all the camera gear, all the stuff. And so, you know, it's a lot of physical toil to carry everything up to the top, rappel in, shoot, you know, work on whatever you're doing, and then you go back up the ropes, pull the ropes back up. I mean, sometimes the ropes weigh anywhere from like 50 to 100 pounds, depending on how far down it the water you're going. So I mean, imagine just pulling a 100 pound weight back up the, up the side of the wall and then coiling it, which makes your shoulders super tight. And then you have to stash it all and then run back down to the valley. And I mean, and that's kind of what we were doing day in, day out for two months. And uh, which is why I said by the end, the crew's all pretty fit. Because it's just, uh, I mean, it's just a lot of hard work. Um, I mean, you don't really see it in the film as much. You just see like, oh, we're all hanging on the wall and it's so fun, we're having a nice time up there. But it's like to get there is not easy. In case you thought it was. <laughs> That's what opened up. That's early. my first thought. This was really easy. He's <laughs> <laughs> got questions. You got a question right here. I said, wow. For the uh, not knowing how long you might record, uh, have to shoot for, was there ever a cap on how long you were going to put on it for a part of you? Or also, did you ever think if you decided you wasn't going to finish it, would you still release it? Oh, okay. That's a good question. Like, if you if you didn't do it, would you still have put a film together of the attempt? Oh, if I decided not to do it, they were gonna get a body double. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure they would have been like, "That guy's out." Yeah. <laughs> Fire, Alex. Yeah. Um, so you said that you were going to do I just enjoyed the view. You know, I'm just like, oh, it's so beautiful, it's so great, like that looks awesome. 
Um, I mean, realistically, it's hard to evaluate performance from that. I mean, when I watch the Boulder Problem, I'm like, that is perfectly executed. I mean, I practiced it for so long, and then when I see it, I'm like, oh, that looks good. Like, I look tight, I place my feet well, and, you know, everything. And yeah, I'm like, oh, it looks good. And, uh, but, you know, I mean, you would expect after from two years of working on it that it came together pretty well. You know, mostly when I watch the climb, I'm just like, that is beautiful. I mean, I, I love El Cap. I've always loved Yosemite. And to just see it on the big screen, I'm like, that is awesome. Uh, yes. All right. Yeah, you do. Thank you. Thanks. Did we decide to include ourselves in the film? Well, I'm not in the film, but she <laughs> is in the film. Uh, uh, which is a real bonus of being director's partners, is that she will be in the film. Um, it was, I mean, the ethical question is at the heart of this film. It's like the existential issue in the heart of this film. Like, if you're filming Alex, is he more likely to fall? And the only honest, authentic way to really handle that and address it was to put our filmmaking process into the film itself. Um, it was also helpful narratively in terms of Alex was by himself. It was a big secret, and we needed, we felt that audiences needed someone to like react to Alex, and the film crew were those people. You know, Mike, we really can't watch him do it, and that's, <laughs> I, we really hope he didn't ruin his career as a cinematographer because he's a guy who doesn't look good at you find him. <laughs> and he's very good at what he does, but, that, but that's why. It's just so important to be just to be honest and help folks <coughs> understand what we were going to do. the plan from the beginning? I guess I'm wondering when you figured that out. It was, I mean, the plan, it was the plan from the beginning because it felt too self reflexive. Like it, it's not about us at all. But it became clear that it had to happen. Um, and we didn't really even shoot for it. Like, and that was, it, that was also a challenge. Like, how do you, we didn't have that much material with us. It's time for one more. How about thank you? started out as an individual, you know, you started climbing, it was a very solo kind of process, but filmmaking is so collaborative. How big of a challenge was it to be surrounded by so many people as you're also challenged, you know, taking on the biggest challenge in the world? I mean, climbing is, I don't know if anybody heard that, but I'll just answer anyway. Um, <laughs> I'll be yeah. yeah, so, so how challenging was it to not only have all everyone around you, but also to do that while you're doing the biggest challenge of your life. Yeah, we, we, you started the question by saying that climbing is such a sole activity, but really climbing is quite a collaborative activity as well. I mean, I'm normally climbing with partners and, and with friends, and, and the climbing community is a very rich and, and colorful community that, um, that, I mean, yeah, that we've been a part of for a very long time. And so, you know, I'm definitely used to working with people, and in a lot of ways, the thing is that free solo and I say free solo projects, they're normally totally secret because, I mean, as you see in the film, nobody really wants to hear about free soloing that much because it's kind of, I mean, as you saw, it's horrifying to watch, it's like, it's stressful. Like, so, I mean, you never, you never really talk to your friends about it because you don't want to put that on them, and, and they, in turn, don't want to have to hear about it. They're like, oh, no. Um, and so, so, typically, free solo projects are totally by yourself. Um, and that was actually one of the big appeals in, in working on the film for me was that I was able to sort of split the work and split the, you know, basically have my friends help me on this project that I wanted to do. Because I've been wanting to free solo cap for a very long time and it sort of lacked, you know, basically I just hadn't started putting the effort in. I kept kind of waiting for it to come together and just happen. But, I, you know, after many years, I realized that somewhere I'm going to have to, you know, buckle down and do a lot of work to make this happen. And I was like, to do this work, it actually is quite helpful to have some of my friends up there, like physically help me carry ropes up and rappel in and get in position and like work on the different elements of, of the climb. And so, uh, yeah, so I mean, honestly, I think the films were kind of helped in that way. So, yeah. so uh, last question, actually, last question is what's your next climb? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I climbed indoors this morning. <laughs> um, I'll come into um, you know, I don't know, while we've been touring with the film, I'm just enjoying Jim climbing and just, you know, climbing what I can. Uh, take, take it easy, you've earned it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, El Cap was such a big inspiration for so many years, it's hard to imagine what's going to fill that. Um, you know, I, I honestly don't know if there are any Wallace Price inspiring in the world for, for free song like that. Uh, and I think I'll be, I'll be fine with that. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here today.